studio. This studio I've had for the last two years, uh, a little over two years. Uh, I usually, you know, I've been around Wakefield, lived in Wakefield about 30 years, but I've taken over this uh, studio in the last two years, and this is when I started to de develop these pieces, the figures. Uh, when I work on something, I just do it on impulse. A lot of things just come naturally to me. I don't really, it's more like from the subconscious, I don't really plan what I do. So when I'm working on something, they just develop on their own. They sort of evolve from one piece to the other. For, so over the last few years, uh, a lot of my work has um, developed from original pieces. Like a lot of these things come from an, a, a, a piece of work that's been done or oh, maybe five, ten years ago. And so I take the same piece and I develop it into something else. And so they actually evolve. So can Um, yes. This one? Yeah. And I work a lot of, you know, they have a, a, a nice natural movement to them. And I work on, on the backs a lot. And what do you use? Oh, I use burlap, uh, cotton, some of sawdust. I use uh, white glue, uh, latex paint, and like I said, I do the originals in wax and then do a mold, and then I distort some of the molds. The molds can be distorted. Um, so a lot of these faces are actually the same face, but they've been twisted, and. Um, and the figures, for instance, this figure here of the, uh, the, 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 I call them specters. That is actually where these, the larger pieces came from. And that was done uh, back in 2004. So when I play around a lot with the technology theme, in fact, I don't even own a computer, but I play with the, uh, the idea of, you know, my, I refer to those, those as my little techno demons. And so there's sort of a play on the whole idea of technology and in, in, in getting involved in the human process. And that's why these figures, a lot of them are like this. So how did you... I was 14, uh, going to high school, had uh, some shows over the years at the Saw Gallery going back in the 70s. Um, and a lot of the theme that I'm still using, the, the nuts and bolts, for instance, I use those going way back to the 70s. So I've always used nuts and bolts. I've always liked them because, for one thing, they can always be changed. Every piece can be changed, and nothing's ever static. It, it can be disassembled, put together again. It's almost like a mechanical set. And what about this? Uh, they have, uh, yeah, of course. I, 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 they're almost like they're almost like masks, or some people refer to them as more like a gargoyle kind of uh, feature, and. I just, just like I say, they just develop. I don't have any, I don't try to control what I'm doing. My mind just sometimes you do, but on the whole I don't. And I just play with whatever I got. What inspires you? Oh, like I say, it comes from the uh, subconscious mostly. I put, I, I, whatever has, is happening around me at the time, my life is really, I sort of, I have a friend who uh, once mentioned to me, you know, I have no problem exposing my, uh, my exposing my soul. <laughs> like I just, whatever comes out, you know, I don't hold back with it. And uh, so sometimes some of the things that come out can be very strange and sometimes, you know, not so strange. It all depends on how I'm feeling at the time. It was, you know, those have been done the last couple of years. I actually use the large pieces a lot of times as backdrops for the sculptures. So I'll do a sculpture and I'll have the painting up and I'll have the sculpture in front of the painting. So it gives it the extra dimension. And what about here? Uh, yes, and this one, she, I would call that one my fishy thing. It's, uh, it's done with um, um, uh, cheesecloth and glues and paint. And I've played with the idea of frogs for a long, long time. They've always been sort of part of uh, what I've done. Like, for instance, the piece there. Can we go there? Oh, on the right. 
this one here. Here. This is this one goes back to oh, geez, that goes back to the same time as the uh, uh, that painting there. It, it it goes back to about ten ten years ago. And then again, that's evolved with the frogs. I still use the frogs, and I've always used the frogs. So it's um, I call that one metamorphosis. Is it a standing piece? Ah, it can be. It can be standing. It can be lying down. Uh, when I first showed it, it was like this, but also you can you can stand it up. It makes no difference. And uh, I see more paintings here. Yeah. Again, those uh, are older paintings. And uh, yeah, that one's zero four. I call that one the frog pond. I mean the turtle pond, excuse me. And that one is the friar. Uh, again, that goes back to he's uh, Savriola. He, he was a monk during the time of the Medici's. He didn't like. He was not impressed with the Pope back then, and uh, they ended up uh, um, uh, burning him at the stake. <laughs> <laughs> So that's why I call him the friar. And that painting over there, the green one, that's uh, called that one zero. Uh, again, that's playing with the technology thing. That's when I started playing around with the idea. And uh, it's, it's, it's a combination of human condition and, and technology. What about this large one? This oh, large that one? one, that goes back. I originally did that when I was 15 years old. I was in grade 10. Not that painting, but I did the original poster of pen, in pen and ink. And I did a few versions of that one, and that one I did about 10 years ago. And I always liked it. I call it secondhand smoke. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I work to as, as large as I can. I, I usually don't have a very large space, but if I, if I have a large space, I'll fill it up pretty. I've done pieces about 35 feet long. Well, that one there again. There, um, those that one's just from a show I did uh, to do with genetics, and it was a it uh, it was, oh, Darwin. It was uh, Darwin's anniversary, 2009 anniversary, 2000, yeah, 2009, 2010. And I did a few of those pieces, and they, you know, played around with the idea of genetics and and evolution. And the other one. Yeah, that's again. Those are my little specter things. Again, the um, uh, that's where the larger pieces originally came from. Actually, I actually have one painting in the back, which, which which was actually the first painting I ever did to play with that idea, and that sort of developed into everything. And everything. Um, I'm I'm still painting, uh, doing some paintings, doing the. Uh, the figures. I'm just trying to develop them more, and then I'm hopefully what I want to do is I want to move on from obviously from these things. I don't like to stagnate too long in one theme. In the corner, the uh, oh, the uh, yeah, I call that Luna. I did that one quite a few years ago. It uh, again, it was um, started with the faces, and it's it's do with uh, well. Yeah, Luna, it's like the moon shape. And uh, it has a certain appeal. Thank you so much. Well, I was going to point that one out. Uh, I call, that one's uh, Rocket Man. It's uh, Homo erectus. He's the first considered human. So that's my rendition of him, but I call it Rocket Man. And uh, he had to do with, well, again, the human evolution well there's a you know there's definitely a controversy over if we were naturally born violent or uh, that's just uh, something we've developed but you know there's that kind of thing but I don't know it's hard to to to, to feel but um, that this has a lot to do with the technology play um, is I don't think we're really capable of learn. our technology is further advanced than we are emotionally to handle that's what I feel 
And I'm not the, obviously I'm not the first one to say that, but it's just how I do feel about it. So that's why these these little techno techno demons and the the idea of the rocket man and the har har font, um, all this sort of thing. This sort of that's where I, I come from. You know, that's how I'm thinking. So emotion. That painting there is actually the first one I did that connected everything. That I started in the last you know, in the last uh, 15 or the last 10 years. Um, and so that's where it sort of started with the little figures, the technology, that was the first painting, and everything else developed from that. So you seem to kind of bridge um, our ancestors to our future. Exactly. Yeah. And it's hard to explain sometimes. That's uh, basically what I'm trying to say. It's just... Uh, it's hard to, you know, explain it sometimes, but after, you know, obviously I'm a visual person. I, you know, I, that's how I, you know. And I also see two trees. Oh, they go back. Yeah, again, those were sort of things that came out of, um, oh, they're, they're about 20 years old, actually. I did those in the early 90s. And again, they were uh, a play on, um, uh, it just something I was going through, and I just developed them. I don't even, don't even remember thinking about why I did them. They just started to develop, and I did actually eight of them, eight or nine of them. And there was a chair, and there was another piece with it. It was so it was basically an installation. And uh, what are they made of? Uh, they're a mixture of um, uh, wood pulp and uh, drywall uh, plaster. Really, that's what they're made from. And I uh, did a, a wire frame from the in inside. It was sort of like a pap mache start, and then I, I just, did, you know, did the uh, covering and the, uh, the plaster. Do you have a favorite medium? <sighs> Not really. Um, I like to paint. You know, I like oils. I like uh, I'll use any anything that comes into uh, that's convenient at the time, but it works.